Welcome, everyone, to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper. For those of you not familiar with the show, my guests and I will cover every angle of real estate under the sun, from interest rates to the economy to what's happening in Washington. Anything that affects our local real estate markets will be covered here. If you got credit issues, you can call me. If you're looking to buy or sell your home or you're in a distressed situation and you're, you, know, you can't make your mortgage payments any longer, you've been dealing with your banks trying to get a loan modification and have been unsuccessful, you can reach out and call me. There are plenty of other options versus just burying your head in the sand and letting your property go to foreclosure, which is ba- basically the, the, last, uh, the last thing that would take place that's probably the worst situation because your credit could be destroyed by that foreclosure. You've got questions, and I've got the answers. The best number to reach out to me is the off-air number. It's 877-245-2030. That's 877-245-2030. And remember, that's an off-air phone number. If you call that number, uh, you get probably a voicemail. You leave a message, and I'll get back to you by the end of business today. Make sure that you guys join us every Monday at WNEW 1580 AM from 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Like I said, if you have any questions or concerns, that number is 877-245-2030 or leave us uh, a question on our website at realestate360live.com. That's realestate360live.com. On the right-hand side, there's an Ask a Question button. Just feel free to click that, put your contact information and your question in there, and we'll be get back to you. Remember, if it's real estate, it's covered here. We've got a great show lined up for you guys today. Joining me on our panel uh, to discuss the many issues of, and what's happened in the markets over the last week and what's going what's ahead this week that can affect you and your real estate decisions, whether it's you know you're buying or selling a home or trying to figure out whether you should lock in your interest rates, is Luis Camarasano, who's the general manager of HomeGain. Luis is often cited in the media as an industry expert in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, CNN Money, Fox Business, Smart Money, MSN, and numerous others. Luis, how you doing today? I'm good, and yourself, Ryan? I am doing grand, sir. Uh, how, how was your weekend? Anything exciting? Not really. Nice out here in San Francisco, though. Yeah, it was uh, it was hot, 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 hot here again. We uh, don't have that kind of weather very often. Yeah, it was uh, probably, I would say, what, 104 I was looking at on my temperature outside the other day. Um, you know, we looked like we were going to have some storms. They were calling for severe thunderstorms again yesterday, but it didn't. Um, in certain areas, it hit, but for the most part, it wasn't too bad. Thank goodness. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today. Obviously, I mean, I'll start. We we got the employment numbers at the end of of last week, which um, they really, I mean, they weren't anything to write home about. They keep saying that it looks like that the economy is turning the corner. The U.S. unemployment re- rate remained unchanged at 8.2 percent in June. Um, that's, of, co- of course, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which was reported Friday. Um, the non-farm payroll employment grew by 80,000 jobs in June, but overall the number of unemployed Amer- Americans is roughly 12.7 million, which stayed the same. Um, basically what this m- amounts to is, is that you know we're really not – it's kind of just a stagnant economy. We're not really going uh, going anywhere, and we have a lot of artificial manipulation with interest rates, and it seems like every every time we get one of these reports, everybody is reverting back to, oh, great, what's the Fed going to do? And it's it's funny because it's like, well, why – what makes everybody think that the Fed has an answer to this problem? Because they've, they've done about as much as they possibly can do, and it's still not getting better. They're looking for central planned um – that are free market solutions to our to our issues, and central planners have a way of using more debt and then stimulus to solve problems. And we had that one trillion dollar stimulus that didn't work, and we had low interest rates and QE one and QE two. Those apparently should be clear to people are not the answers. Yeah, and you know they're calling for QE three, and it's saying that you know they feel um, they feel like it, it's important. That the Fed, you know, continues their role in in, in this quantitative easing uh, to to basically ease the markets. And I'm like, well, okay, great. They've basically been buying mortgage-backed securities for an extended period of time now. What is it really going to do to push interest rates instead of like closer from 35 down to 3%? What is that going to change? It's not going to change anything on the residential mortgage side because the underwriting guidelines are not going to change. Right. It just increases the money supply, which adds to inflation and the, the increase in cost of fixed goods. Yeah. So, 
it, it, it's it's rather puzzling to me why everybody on Wall Street just thinks that hey they're going to you know have this solution. Well, you know what, Ryan? The the low interest rates do it doesn't hasn't really spurred any investment in productivity. It's just spurred investment in the stock market and trading. Yeah, absolutely. So that just means that because you can't get a return on your savings, you toss it in the stock market, and then the price of the shares goes up. And then because companies don't have any value to put their money into uh, their business, they do buybacks of their shares, and that causes the stock market to go up. Everyone thinks the economy is doing better because the stock market is higher when you still have all this unemployment. Right, and you have, a, like we had spoke about you know, many months ago, you have a lot of, of you know, seniors that are out there that are you know, basically dependent upon retirement income or you know, how the markets are doing, and, and they can't make anything in CDs making less than 1%. So they're forced into you know, putting some of their money at risk in the markets, and you know, that's not a good long-term solution for them. So, you know, but it's pr- really their only option at this point because they can't make any money. Um, so therefore, people don't build their savings, and economy works best when it invests off its savings. Absolutely. Not when it, not when it tries to buy more stuff with free money that the Fed prints up. And, and, and typically, you know, history has said that, you know, when, it, when there is cheap money available, it tends to lend itself to these bubbles, whether it's in the stock market, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in bonds. At, at some point, these bubbles all burst. Right, and now the bubble is, having gone through the, the – dot com bubble and the housing market bubble. We're now in the sovereign debt bubble where all of the sovereigns from Europe to the United States and Japan have overextended themselves and their only way out is to print up more money. Yeah. That's that's exactly right. Um, you're listening to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper, joined by my guest, Louis Camarosan of the General Manager Home Gain. There was an interesting, um, I believe it was the San Francisco um, Fed president. Yes, it was John Williams. He had given a little statement on his economic outlook and challenges to the monetary policy. And it was interesting, and I'll, I'll read some of it here, that he expects that the unemployment rate will remain at, at or above 8% until the second half of 2000. 2013. Um, as as far as inflation, he's, he expects for the inflation rate to come in below the Fed's 2% target both this year and next. Uh, he thinks that there's going to be obviously a sluggish labor market. Um, strong, The stronger dollar is holding down import prices, and the global growth slowdown has pushed down the prices of crude oil and other commodities. His forecast is based on what he considers the most likely scenario. However, he said that there's so much uncertainty as far as what's going to go on with the tax increases and spending cuts at the start of 2013, as well as what's going on over in Europe. And I mean, I think those those are huge things that could definitely sway things in this economy. Don't you agree, Lewis? I mean, that those are the biggest biggest issues at play right now. Well, it's interesting whether there's a tax increase on the middle class or the upper class. Really, has nothing to do with how the economy is going to do, other than it can only hurt. If you increase taxes, because the increase in tax isn't going to go towards any grand deficit reduction plan. It'll go towards additional spending, where you know when the government spends money, the return on investment is often negative. Yeah. So even though you know we spend, I think in California, we're going to spend billions of dollars on a high-speed rail, it will create jobs, but at a cost that's astronomical, astronomical per job created. So it... Knowing that people may have to pay more in taxes just means they're going to clamp down on money that they have to invest and even money they have to spend. So I don't see why raising taxes seems to be the answer to a sluggish economy. Yeah, I mean, no, no, because nobody wants to just take and, and start cutting things out of the budget. Because that's... Well, the thing is, if you do cut things out of the budget, that frees up money for the private sector to better allocate capital to where you might actually create jobs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the private markets have shown... Um, you know, over extended period of times that they have the ability to do that. Uh, it just seems as though the government just wants their hands in everything, though. I mean, obviously, we've seen such a, a dramatic increase in, in government jobs over the last 10 years that it, it, it's it, they're basically taking over everything. And you also think, I, mean, just, I just read a recent survey, I don't know if it was Rasmussen, but it showed that up to 60 percent of people will take less services for the government in exchange for paying less taxes for them, which means that the services – that people receive from the government aren't deemed worth the money that you pay for them. Yeah, well, I mean, and you, you know, you sent me that uh, the email this morning, the YouTube videos when we talked about what two weeks ago about the food stamp commercials. They're spending we, the, you know, basically they're, they 
spending three million dollars to basically put out information for people that I guess are unaware of the food stamp benefit that's available to them. And they're not just advertising food stamps as being available; they're advertising them as if they can cure all your social ills. I mean, if you listen to that commercial, it says. Oh, she's looking so good lately. Why is that? Well, she's eating better because she's on food stamps. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of the wrong message to spend. I mean, food stamps already cost the taxpayers money, but then to act, put out advertisements that cost money to get more people on them just doesn't make any sense. Not, not at all. I mean, it was it doesn't create any jobs. It's not creating any jobs. It, it's, it's, it's more, more government spending that it creates votes for people who promote them. Exactly, and that's that's more or less what I feel it is. Is it's it's probably you know tr- it was meant to make it seem like that they're doing something once again that they're trying to help people that are down and out going into this next election. Um, but at the end of the day, is that is it really helping anything? Is it you no? Know, it's not creating any jobs. Is it is it doing anything for this economy? No, it's not. Most people that are on food stamps would prefer not to be on food stamps and to have a better paying job. I mean, I I know that that would probably be the case for ninety nine percent of the people. Um, it also, Although, but when you make the when you make the food stamps and the unemployment so rich, it actually makes you realize that you're better off staying on the support than to take a low paying job. Yeah, because I think in certain instances, you know, the people decide that hey, I can make more money staying at home with the government paying me versus going back to that job and, and getting the wage there with is caught with the cost of gas and everything else. Right. I mean, it's just it, it makes more sense for them to do so. So they'll stay on those unemployment benefits until there's a job that's going to pay them enough money to compensate for all those factors. Uh, and, and, and that's, you know, I know that there's tons and tons of people out there. I mean, I've talked to many of them and that they've just made that strategic decision to do so. I, I had an employee here who um, realized it was more economic to remain on unemployment than it was to, to work here. Yeah, I, I mean, and it's, you know, I I don't know. I mean, I, the. To me, it's like, okay, that's great that you're supplying them with the unemployment benefits. To me, it should be – part of that money should be used for some sort of training or, or, or whatever it may be to, to – you know, I don't care if it's uh, closed a better interview. I don't know what it is, but do something that makes the, makes the individual want to get up and find a job. What they're doing now is, is keeping everybody at home sitting on the couch. Um, and, and, it's not, and, you know, it's, it's not because – What's keeping people on the couch also is that the economy isn't good, and in many cases they can't get a job. Sure. The problem is with the, the, the instance we're talking about is where they might be able to get one, which would reduce the roles of people on unemployment, but they realize it's not worth it. Yeah, but there's also – You have two issues. Sure. And then, but, you know, there's, there's plenty of also – there's plenty of jobs out there. It's just those type of jobs people don't want or, you know what I mean? Like there's plenty of minimum wage jobs out there that if you work two or, you know, two jobs, you, you, could, you could make things work. But people don't want to do that um, because like, their other option is to collect those unemployment benefits, which is going to pay them about the same thing. Well, we've been conditioned in the United States that, you know, any type of real work is, is not for Americans. That's for immigrants or for people in other countries to do which is, is really harmful to the economy because, you know, you shouldn't have to start at the top job. You should start getting your hands dirty. Yeah, and, and, and you know. Learning a skill, learning a trade, or, or, or even just working in the mailroom to start. But if you take the view that somehow you're entitled to, to get a $50,000 a year job just because you happen to finish college or you used to get $50,000 a year, that's the wrong message to send. You know, and it would be interesting to see because I bet you're more apt to probably like, let's say it was, you know, a high school person that just graduated high school, 18 years old, that actually went into the workforce and and was working their way up from 18 to 22, and and you know whatever type of job they wanted to go after at that point in time, what they would be making four years later compared to the college graduate that goes to school for four years and comes out and wants that same job at equal money, you know. I, I would think the, the guy who went to high school at that point is probably far more valuable to his employer than the college grad who doesn't know what he's doing. To me, that would be the case. But I think the government, like I, this basically brainwashed everybody into into thinking that they're worth more just because they went and got that college education. Well, they need that to be the case because they want you to borrow money to, to go to college, and they have to tell the value of going to college. And now the government, what are they? they they're the number one or the only backer of student loans. It's even worse. Than a housing market. Yeah, and and we have basically almost what one third of those loans that people are defaulting on right now are behind. You know, I saw an interesting cartoon. It showed where 
you know, the chant or the mantra was in the 2000s, everybody has to own a home, and that led to a bubble and this massive displacement of homeowners. And now it's everyone has to go to college. You know where that's going to lead. It just keeps driving the price of college higher, and the value of it doesn't go up. And then people have enormous debt, and they don't even have an asset behind it other than a diploma. Yeah. Then who's going to end up paying uh, the loan back if you, if you don't have a job? It's a great question, and and the majority of them are just going to be defaulting. Uh, but the the issue with that and how it relates to you know to the mortgage industry and buying a home, if you default on your student loan debt and then tr- turn around later to try to take out a government backed mortgage like an FHA mortgage, you can't get one because yeah, so, hey, look at the young people, Ryan. If they can't pay their mortgage, if they can't pay their student loan back, and they can't get a job. How are they going to buy a house? And that's really the problem. If you want the home ownership society, you need the next generation coming up to be able to afford and get access to mortgages so that they can buy homes. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. We're coming up on a break. When we come back, we're going to jump into this week's market movers. What's going to move interest rates one way or the other when we come back? Stay right there.